Next, will a modern mummy pass the test? Only time will tell. Stay tuned to TBS. News of the discovery took the world by storm. It was the start of mummy mania. The general public, of course, is always interested in mummies. The mummies draw them into the museums. Everybody knows that. And, and everybody knows the mummy movie. <coughs> Hollywood got the mummies up and walking again, but not in the way the ancient Egyptians ever envisioned. For them, the body was to be treated with great reverence and care. When a king died, he was ferried across to the west bank of the Nile, where the embalmer shops were. The Egyptians lived on the east bank, and those who could afford it buried their dead on the west. The sun dies in the west, so they associated the west with death, and they called the people who died westerners. They didn't want to call them dead, so they had lots of euphemisms. They called them westerners. If you died, you went west. After the body was dropped off on the west bank, the embalmers had to work on it for 70 days. The first thing they did was to take out the moist internal organs. This is to help prevent decay, if you don't remove all the moisture, the body will rapidly deteriorate. Behind, right? I was going to try to pick up the ligament. Mm-hmm. Right. Okay. Well zip That's there. a stomach. Zip through that. Yeah. Right here, the right? The embalmers were really technicians. They were the ones who knew the anatomy, knew where the liver was, knew where the stomach was, and could take it out through a small slit. Well, I'd wanted, I want to get it out whole, because uh, I've only seen one other liver taken by, by ancient Egyptians, and it's only a half a liver in the Metropolitan Museum of Art. And I sort of thought, well, I don't know if you can get it out whole, but I, I think you might be able to. The ancient embalmers didn't leave us a manual, but as we proceed, it's becoming clear what they must have done. There it is. Yeah, it took a little more of an incision, just a, just a hair, a more. hair more. It was different. Okay, Bill, do you have a tray? Each organ was carefully removed and ritually placed in a special vessel called a canopic jar. Well, the ancient texts say that they washed out the abdominal cavity with myrrh and palm wine. So we're just going to do it the way they said they did it. So we've got a linen covering inside the abdominal cavity already. And I'm going to put the myrrh right on the linen. But this is the palm wine. Here it goes. The ancient Egyptian word for wine was erp, like a burp. This is where the Egyptians came to get their natron, which they used to dehydrate the body. In the ancient days, they called it the field of salts here, the wadi natrun. Natron is much better than just salt for preserving something. It's got an extra thing in it. It's got basically baking soda. And you know how you put, um, when you put baking soda in your refrigerator to absorb the smells? This must have helped in mummification. It not only preserved, but it got rid of some of the horrible odor that must have been involved with mummification. For my mummy, I'm going to need a lot of natron. Now I've got almost 200 pounds here, and I'm going to probably get another 200. The mummy has to be totally immersed in it, so I'm going to have to have natron under it. I want to put natron on top of it, then fill the inside of the mummy with little packets of it, so that the mummy will dehydrate from inside and outside at the same time. Even Tutankhamun had some of these little packets that were buried in his embalmer's cache. All right, Ron, we'll do it down here. Okay, I'm going to pour it right here. Okay. Mm -hmm. There it goes. Yeah, you just smooth it in out. In a small basement room at the University of Maryland Medical School, we've recreated the ancient embalmer's tent, no, keeping the humidity place. low to be like the dry desert air. Okay. We're just about there. Do you think we can get about six or seven more jars out of that? No problem. All right, Ron, here's the liver. If you can put it on the far corner, and we'll cover it a little later with a little more natron. Now we have to wait 35 days to see if the mummification actually takes place. We don't know for sure if the dehydration will be complete. We don't know if the natron will do its job.
Whatever the outcome, this has been an important scientific venture. But there's something else about doing this. Almost defying death, preserving some measure of that human being as he was in life. I wonder, did the ancient embalmers feel any of this? Did they feel pride, hope, fear? I think it'll work, but I really don't know for sure. good, don't they? That's really desiccated. That is good. It's good. Now, take your brush. Let's, let's see where we go. Oh, here's the fingers. You know, it looks more like a mummy than I thought it would, because I thought there'd be more moisture. I think we're doing it the way they did it. I never be 100% sure, but I'm, I think this is the way they did it. this. Of course, I'm grateful to the body donor. It's still a wonderful thing for anyone to give his body to science, and I'm hoping that he would enjoy knowing that this is happening. I don't know for sure, though, but I like to think that he would like it. Finally, we want to finish the process, just as they would have, by anointing the body with oils, then wrapping it in fine linen. Right, if you were wealthy enough, you'd have a priest who's wearing a mask of the jackal-headed Anubis, god of embalming. The priest would say certain rituals over the body as it was being wrapped. Okay, they would good. pour unguents on the body. Frankincense and myrrh would be nice used to time. perfume it. This is All good. Right, so Okay. Now, one of the funerary amulets used for the deceased was a heart amulet to protect the heart. The only organ inside him now is the heart. And this will protect the heart and make sure the heart doesn't speak out against him in the next world. Okay. Let's get one of the magical bandages. And then when it comes out, I think you'll see there's an inscription on it. This has, this right here is the weighing of the heart against the feather of truth in the next world. So it's an appropriate bandage for this area. The magical spells on the bandages aren't really part of my research. I'm interested in the technique of mummification. People just felt we should do it right, do the magical spells too, so we've done that. Uh, and they're, they're accurate. These are, these are what the papyri say should be on it. The hope is it'll be in a medical museum Periodically, we're going to have to sample tissues to see what, what age does to it, how the dehydration continues. So it'll be monitored carefully, and uh, hopefully people will learn from it. it. Looks good. We just have to seal the ends. Seal the ends. I think the care that we're giving to this mummy and the whole mummification process is certainly better than what the average mummy got. There have been no shortcuts for this man, which is good. He deserves it. At the tomb, the last rituals were performed on the mummy. There was the opening of the mouth ceremony, where a priest would take an adze, an oddly shaped implement, touch it to the mummy's mouth, and say a final blessing to give the mummy new life. May the king grant a wish to Osiris, god of the dead, lord of Abydos. May he grant bread and beer, oxen, geese, alabaster and cloth, all things good and pure upon which the gods live for the deceased for your life forever. You are young again, you live again. You are young again, you live again forever. <laughs>